glad that we're here in the house of the Lord. So glad that you are tuning in. God is on the move, and you know, we're here this morning. It's God's plan. Come on now. It is God's plan here today that we find ourselves in the house of the Lord. It, David said it so clearly. I, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Come on now. Are you excited? Come on. It's a new day. Woo. His mercies are fresh and new. We can get excited to be in the house of the Lord. And let me, let me uh, see who's out there. Come on and text in the, in the inbox. Who's out there? Who's representing here this morning? What tribe is out there? What clan is out there? What, come on now, what city is out there? Come on now. We, we're, we're, we're so glad that here today we welcome you out to, to this morning's heart to heart. Come on now. A, 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 a time that we can come together and we can hear the heart of the Lord. We can hear some direction. We can hear some instruction. We can hear so some revelation. Come on now. Who needs some revelation here this morning? Who, who needs some encouragement? Come on now. Who needs, amen, God just to move? God's been moving. Come on now. If you've been a part of this church, oh, you know that God's been moving in all our services. You know that God's been moving, amen, uh, through through prayer. Come on now. We're an answer to prayer. Come on now. We're, we're getting the attention of God. And that's why we're here this morning. We're here this morning to continue to get the attention of God. Hallelujah. Oh, if you're out there, amen, what an opportunity to go ahead and share. Uh, we want to go ahead and share this morning's heart to heart. We want to go ahead and invite, amen. How many know that there, there's somebody out there? There's somebody out there that needs Jesus. There's somebody out there in our family, our friends, our neighbors. It's time, amen, to get everybody together, everybody in your house. Oh, it's time. It's time for some church. You know, God's a, a God who is able to turn our mourning into gladness. Come on, our... our spirit of heaviness with an oil of gladness. I don't know about you, but that's that's that that was for somebody here this morning is that you know what God he, he's ready to pour out his spirit. Come on now, he's he he wants to amen uh, restore joy this morning. Oh, come on, he wants to forgive sins. Come on, now, God is a God here this morning of love. And I really believe that here this morning that God wants us to encounter his love. He wants us to encounter, amen, and, and experience uh, just the, the embrace of God, the, the, the Holy Spirit, water, the refreshing here this morning. Oh, come on now, hallelujah. If you're out there, just right there, take a moment to share, get a watch party going, amen. It, it's time here this morning just to go ahead and, and continue, amen, to get our hearts ready, prepare our hearts. It's so important that this morning our hearts are ready, our hearts are fertile, that our hearts here this morning, you know, are ready for God's word. God is going to move, and God wants to move. He desires to move, and, and you know, here this morning, I, you know, it's my desire, and, I, and, and I'm hoping that we have that same spirit this morning to get God's attention. Get God's attention here this morning. Again, we just want to continue to welcome you out to this morning's Heart to Heart. Amen. Uh, so glad that you're here this morning. God is, is getting ready to pour out his spirit. God is, is, is getting ready here this morning. And, and, you know, God's looking for true worshipers. He's looking for those. He's a, the Bible in John chapter 4 says, you know, that he's looking for the true worshipers, that there's a time that is coming in, and now is the time. He's looking for those that will worship him in spirit and in truth. He's looking for true worshipers this morning. True worshipers will, will not, you know, uh, be held back from, you know, a, a restricted place. You know, just because we're not in the church building, just because, you know, the, the environment isn't what we're used to. No, true worshipers will worship him wherever we're at here this morning. Oh, come on. Are you a true worshiper? 
Are you one here this morning that, you know, wants to give God his praise and exalt him and lift him up and, and, and give him that place of acknowledgement uh, as our Savior, our Lord, uh, our God here this morning who is mighty in battle. He's a mighty warrior. Oh, I'm not the one that's going to be preaching today, but man, you know, I'm here to encourage you that, you know what, God is, he, he wants our worship. He wants our praise. He, he wants, amen, our, our adoration to him of, of who he is in our life. Who is he this morning? Is he your savior, the one who rescued you? Is he the one who was strong enough by his mighty hand to lift you up out of that pit? Was he the one that this morning uh, who is setting your feet on solid ground? Oh, is he the one that, you know what, gathered you like, like uh, you know, the chicks, uh, the, uh, you know, from, from the hen and, you know, uh, man, he, that's, he longs, he longs to gather us. And, you know, he, he desires that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. You know, I really believe that here this morning, that God wants us here this morning just to, to be in his presence. And I know right now his presence is here and his presence right there is moving. And, you know, hallelujah, we're going to go before the Lord and, you know, if you have a need this morning, you can go ahead and, and put it in the, in, in the text box. And, you know, God wants to move. And I really believe, you know, by faith, we want faith that gets his attention. We want worship that gets his attention. And we want prayer that gets his attention here this morning. Join with me here this morning by closing your eyes and right there where you're at, lifting up your hands. As we go before the Lord, if you have a need here this morning, I, I'm going to believe God that right now, just by faith, by prayer, oh, in our time of worship, that God would meet your need here this morning. Hallelujah. Let's go before the Lord. Father, we thank you. God, we give you all the glory and honor here this morning, oh God. Oh, we're so grateful today. Grateful, God, that you called us today, Lord, to gather together. Lord, you know us by name, oh God. And Father, this morning, we surrender this time. We lift you up. God, this it's all about you, God. God, without you, we're nothing. Without you, we wouldn't be here, God. But because of you, Lord, because of your grace and your mercy, oh God, because of, of your love and the blood you shed on Calvary this morning, Lord, God, there's forgiveness of sins. Oh, God, this morning, that's what we pray. Forgiveness in our hearts, forgiveness in our minds, forgiveness in our lives, Lord, that this is morning, Lord. God, that your blood would wash us and cleanse us and purify us, Lord, this morning, oh, God. Oh, because we want to be right before you, Lord. Lord, we want to be those vessels, Lord, of honor, those vessels to worship you with a right heart, oh, God, with a right spirit. It, Lord, with a clean heart, Lord God. Oh, this morning, Lord, we're so grateful and thank you, God, here today. The things that you have for us, Lord, the plans that you have for us are good. Lord, filled with hope and a future this morning, oh God. Lord, you know the need here today. You know those, Lord God, that are lost. Oh God, you know those, Lord God, that, Lord, are struggling, that are discouraged here today. You know those, Lord, here this morning that are sick in body, Lord. Oh God. God, you know those, Lord, that are empty and in need of filling. Oh, God, this morning we lift up our cup, Lord. We lift up, Lord, our lives. We lift up our hearts, Lord. We lift up our marriages, oh, God. We lift, Lord, uh, our children, Lord. Lord, we lift up, Lord, our future, oh, God. Oh, to you, oh, God, that you would be in control this morning, Lord. God, that you, Lord, God, would bring, Lord, salvation to the lost, Lord. God, that you would bring Lord, deliverance to the captive of every addiction, Lord, every stronghold this morning, oh God. God, that here today, Lord, that you would bring healing, Lord, to every sickness and disease, Lord, every injury, every pain, every broken heart, Lord, every broken life, Lord, every broken family, and every broken childhood this morning, Lord. God, that there would be healing and restoration. Oh, Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for your presence. 
Because where your presence is, there is a fullness of joy. Where your presence is, there is a perfect peace, Lord. Where your presence is, there is liberty here this morning, oh God. Oh God, that you would move, Lord, in a special way. Move, Lord, uh, the Lord upon your people and move in our time of worship, oh God. As we worship you, Lord, as we exalt you and give you the glory, hallelujah. Come on, church, right there. Begin to worship God. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We exalt you, Lord. We love you, God. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. I just want to stay here forever I'm living 
right there where you're at. Just continue to stay in the presence. Continue to stay in the presence and just continue to thank. Thank God for what he's been doing in our lives. Thank God for what he's going to be doing in your family's lives. You know, we need to declare it. You know, we need to speak into existence that there is victory in the name of Jesus. That Jesus is on the throne. That God got our back. That God makes the impossible possible. You know, and we just got to continue to keep him the center of our hearts and our minds. Man, when we're in the presence of the Lord, there's freedom, there's peace, there's joy. And God is tugging at your hearts today. God is calling you right there. You that are watching, you that are sitting in that living room. God is calling you to be a leader to your families, to be the one that God uses to reach your brother, your friends, your lives. Don't give up. God is on the throne. Amen. Right there where we're at. Let's just continue to thank him. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, God. Lord, we bring glory to you, Father God. Lord, we praise your holy name right now, God. Lord, I don't know where I would be without you, Father God. And I just thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, family. Come on, church family. Right there. Let's give Jesus a mighty roar. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God is good. Man, I love Jesus. I can't get enough of him. You know, I'm lit for the Lord. I feel sold out for Jesus. And I know that God has something special for you today, this morning. Amen. And right now what we're going to do is if there's any need or if you're going through anything, you know, I encourage you guys continue to put your prayer request right there. Drop it in the comment, you know, continue to give some thumbs up, you know, continue to give a shout out, whatever family, whatever city you're from, continue to shout for Jesus. Amen. You know, the enemy wants to keep us quiet. But when God is in our heart and in our minds, we can't stop telling people about Jesus, about what he is able to do. He's the miracle working God. And right now we're going to get into our tithes and offerings. You know, there's four ways to give, you know, and I encourage you guys to continue to give. Give unto the Lord because God is going to give back abundantly. God is going to continue to meet every need that is needed, not only in your life, but your family's lives, you know. I know we got some things that may be on our mind. I know we got some things that we may be thinking about, family members that we may be praying for. Let me tell you something. When we sow, we reap, and we want to sow good. We want to reap good. Let's not also forget to give to United We Can. You know, United We Can do a lot, and I want to let you know that I'm grateful. You know, I came into the home with no money, but God has blessed back abundantly, and today I stand here as a United We Can member, and I just want to encourage you out there, you leaders, you, you are, that are watching, continue to give. So we can see this ministry go all around the world for Jesus. Amen. God is doing something great in all the countries. God is doing something great in the UTCs. God is doing something great right here in Victory Outreach, West Covina. And right now, before we go before the Lord, as we prepare our tithes and offerings, you can also give on the Victory Outreach West Covina app. You can click by one button and we can give out as we give to the Lord. Also, you can text Victory Outreach West Covina to 77977. Don't forget, you know, we can give to our recovery homes because God is on the throne. Amen. Right now, when we, as we continue to just go before the Lord, let's close our eyes and bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you right now, Lord. Father God, we place everything in your hand, God. Our, 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 our tithes, our offering, God, our problems, our situations, Lord. Lord, we lean unto you right now, God. Father God, we want to be God-dependent, Lord. Father, our ways, God, is lost and bound, God. But we place them at your hands, Father God. Lord, we pray, Father God, over every tithe and offering, God, that is being prepared right now, God, that you know what 
what they're going through, God. You know what's in their hearts. You know what they need, Father God, when we need it, Lord. And we trust in you right now, Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I pray you bless it, God. I pray, Father God, that you just make a way, Father God, for each and every one that is out there right now watching, God. Touch their hearts. Fill their families, God. Let your presence be filled in their house today. And in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, church family. You know, we've been having a powerful time right here in the city of West Covina. You know, God just blessed six graduates. Come on now. I stand here today as a Victory Home graduate. Come on now, clap them hands. Because if God can do it to me, let me tell you something. Your son that's been on your mind, your 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 family member that's been going through some type of addiction, a hurt, depression, anxiety. I'm here to tell you, I'm here to declare today that if God can change my life, then he can change yours. Amen. So I just want to continue to give all, God all the glory for that because God is the miracle working God. Amen. And we got some announcements for you tonight, you know, this morning. We got some announcements, which is Victory Life at 530 in the sanctuary. Don't miss out. We want to continue to get filled with Jesus. We want to get continue to get filled with the word. And I know God is doing something amazing right here in the family of Victory Outreach West Covina. Amen. And after our Victory Life, we have our Sunday celebration service at 7 p.m. So don't miss out. I hope you guys are getting stirred up because 2021 is our year. God is going to do something that is going to blow your minds this year. Amen. So continue to let's fill up God's house. Let's invite people. Let's invite our families. You know, send a text message out. You know, invite your neighbor. Let's do God's work. Amen. Thursday, we have our Come As You Are service where we've been seeing powerful messages where God has been preparing special words for special people like you. And I just want to continue to invite you guys. Let's throw a text. Let's evangelize on the Internet as well. Continue to preach God's word and send out messages so we can invite people to pack God's house. Amen. February 12th, we will be ha the gang will be meeting up. The young people, you know, we want to continue to keep young people and keep them in touch. Keep them in tune with what, with God's word and keep them connected. Amen. So that will be February 12th. They will be meeting up and more details will be coming for you soon. Amen. Also, Sunday, February 14th. Come on now, February 14th, Valentine's Day. We will be having a special valentine service for you and her amen we would like to invite the couples out also for those that may be single that may be wondering where is that special person in their life let me tell you something jesus is the special person it's all about jesus come on now but february 14th we will be having special music some food, and we will also be giving out the word of God. So just continue to stay in tune, stay connected. Don't miss out. That will be our announcements. And also, last but not least, I want to mention our connect groups. Our connect groups are going and moving in a speed like no other. Let me tell you something. God has been doing work in the connect groups, in the leaders. And if you haven't found a connect group yet, don't forget, you can check us out on Victory Outreach West Covina on our app. You could click a button. It'll show you all the type of connect groups that we have in all the locations. And I encourage you guys to continue to stay connected. Amen. Those are our announcements for the day. Thank you and God bless. One thing that I want to jump into is I want to call up a special testimony because God has been doing work in the people's lives right here at West Covina. And we have a special brother that wants to come up and, and, and testify, amen. So help me welcome up Brother Bobby, amen. Good morning, church. Uh, you know what I just wanted to uh, uh, tell you about last um, Saturday. It was a blessing. It was a, We had a powerful, exciting time. You know, the Bible says 
come, all who are thirsty. And we went out there and we invited the community and let the community know that there was a church that loved them. And, and we had rappers. We had we had a, uh, a couple of car low riders and, and some bikers that came out. Man, it was, we had an exciting time. We passed out some some food and some toiletries and, and, and things that the community might need. And so, so man, next time, come on out because uh, God moved last Saturday. And, and, and I just want to let you know that, man, God is real. Jesus is, is coming back soon, man. We got to go out to our community and tell everyone we can who, who, we, who we come across that God is real and God is coming back soon. Listen, the Bible says, man, taste and see that the Lord is good. And that's why we're out there. Come on out. Help us. And, and, and we had an exciting time. So come on. Don't miss the next one. God bless you guys. Have a good day. Amen. Come on. Let's give Bobby a round of applause, man. God is doing something in his life. I know he's hungry. I know he's filled. And I know that God is using him in a mighty and powerful way. So right now what we're going to do is I hope you're ready. I hope you gathered your whole family right there. I hope you're ready to be able to receive the word. I pray that your hearts may be open right now because let me tell you something. God has a special word for you today. Amen. I'm going to say that one more time. God has a special word for you here today. And I just want to continue to ask if we can welcome up my brother, Brother Frank. Amen. As he comes to preach the word. God bless you guys. Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a good hand right there where you're at. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, give it a like. Give it a share. We believe that God wants to do something special with inside of our church. How many of you guys agree with me on that? That God has something special for us. And God wants to move in such a special way. You know, God wants to do something so powerful. And we're able to see that all through of what's happening with our church, with our building. Come on, somebody. How God is able to do something powerful with inside of our lives. And one of the things that God, that we really see that God is doing is God is expanding us. God is expanding us because we're in a time of expansion. Come on, go ahead and type that right there where you're at and say that God is a God of expansion. And that's what I want to talk to you about this morning, that God is going to expand us in a special way. And as God does that, then we're going to be able to see and understand what God wants to do with inside of our lives. If you could take a hold of your Bible right there where you're at, And go with me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 31 through 34. Amen. And as you're getting there, I just want to thank God for my salvation. I also want to thank God for uh, our pastor, Pastor Ezra and Sister Ruthie. We have awesome pastors. Amen. We have uh, uh, such a, an anointed couple. And God's blessed us with his best. The best of victory outreach, amen. I hope you know that, that God has truly blessed us with a special couple, amen. And God has given us a very special couple. Also, thank God for the church. Come on, Victor Outreach, West Covina, my hometown church. Come on, somebody. It's my special church, man. And I love the church, and I love to serve and to work for the church. I love you, church, very much. I hope you feel that, and that I know that God uh, has something special for our church for this next season that he has for us. Amen. And uh, right here in the Bible, in Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, it reads like this. It says, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things. But your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first. Someone say first his kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen. Let's pray. Let's go before the Lord. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, God, and we just thank you, Lord, for everything that you're doing, God. We ask you that you would take control, God, of everything that's happening with inside of our lives, God. We pray that you would bind every distraction, God, bind every opposition right now, God, 
Lord, let your word, Father God, and what you have for your people be spoken clearly, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hide me behind the cross, God. Uh, bind every foul spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Well, the title of my message is The God of Expansion. The God of Expansion. And here this morning, I would like to talk to you real quick about the God of Expansion. We're able to see that God wants to do something powerful with inside of our lives. God wants to do some, some powerful with inside of our lives. And here in this portion of Scripture, we're able to, uh, God is able to show us a couple of things. The first thing that God is showing us is we're able to see the order of life or the priority of life, and that is to seek the kingdom of God first. That we need to seek the kingdom of God first, and all things shall be added unto us. We're also able to see within the previous verses that the people of the world look to things like what are they going to eat and what are they going to drink and what are they going to wear. But us as the people of God need to have a confidence that God is going to provide for us, that God is going to provide for us, that God is going to bless us, that God is going to do something powerful with inside of our life, that God is going to provide every single need of our lives. We're also able to see that God, as we seek the kingdom of, of God, we don't need to worry about anything. Come on. Where all my worrying people at sometimes? Come on, right? Sometimes we can worry about things, and we can uh, crack our heads at night and think about different things that are happening. But me and you, as believers in God, don't have to worry about things because God will bless us in due season. God will bless us in due season. God will bless us and minister to us. And do something special with inside of our lives. But here this morning, I want to focus on our Heavenly Father so that me and you can begin to not only understand who He is, but what He's going to do with inside of our lives. That is why me and you need to know who God is. That's right. Me and you need to know who God really is. And how do we know who God is? We're able to know God by the attributes that He has. We're able to know God by the attributes that he has. There is a universal and moral attributes of God, and we can see them in the word of God that we're able to rely on and we're able to think about and we're able to ponder when we're able to learn about what God wants to do. The first one is, is that God is omnipotent. That's right. God is omnipotent. That word omnipotent means to have complete power or unlimited power. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 32, verse 39, it says, Now see myself, I am he, and there is no God besides me. I put to death, and I bring to life, and I have wounded, and I will heal, and no one can deliver me out of you, my, no one can deliver you out of my hand. And what is it saying? It's saying that God has unlimited power uh, within inside of his life. God has unlimited power when we think about God, and we think about resources or we think about things God has unlimited power God not only has unlimited power but God has complete power come on now isn't that exciting that when the devil tries to come in or when he tries to discourage us or he tries to manipulate situations or he tries to come against us with lies we're able to know that God is omnipotent we're able to know that God has the power to do the impossible with inside of our lives. He's able to bring things to life. He's able to come against the enemy. He's able to deliver us out of every trouble that we have. Why? Because he's in complete, uh, in complete power. His power is unlimited. There is no other God that has power unlimited like God. The second one is a universal attribute of God is that God is omnipresent. That God is omnipresent. That means that God is in all places at all times. That means that God is in all places and at all times. We're able to see that within the Bible. The, the Bible says in Proverbs 15, verse 3, The eyes of the Lord are everywhere, keeping a watch on the wicked and on the good. You know, that's why we don't have to feel alone, and we don't have to feel discouraged. And we could understand that God is compassionate for us, and that God is constantly looking to us. 
God is constantly looking to aid us and to help us. Why? Because God is omnipresent. God is omnipresent. God is everywhere. We're able to have a confidence when we're alone or when we're discouraged or when we're dismayed. God is able to be there with us. God dwells with his people. God is able to encourage his people. God's able to do something special for his people. Why? Because he's with us. He's with us. Not only is God omnipresent, but God is also omniscient. That means that God is all-knowing. That means that God has unlimited understanding. The Bible says in Psalms 94, verse 9, He who fashioned the ear, will he not hear? Or does he who formed the eye not see? Look at what it says. It says, does he who fashioned the ear not hear? Or does he not who formed the eye see? And we're able to know and understand that God knows everything. You know, sometimes as believers, we can find ourselves in situations or in circumstances that we can't understand. That we, can un we can't understand or we can't comprehend. Or sometimes we're in situations where people, uh, people don't even understand what's, what's happening with inside of our lives. Sometimes we could be going through things and no one could even understand what we're going through. But God is unlimited in understanding. God knows what we're going through. And God understands the situations that are happening. And God hears what's happening with inside of our lives. Sometimes we could be getting oppressed at work. Or we can be going through situations with our, with our, with our families. Or we can be getting discouraged by our kids. Or different things that happen. But I'm here to let you know that God sees and hears everything. That God sees and hears everything. And God is able to help us in the time of need. That's why me and you could take comfort. We could take comfort and understand what God wants to do. Now we're talking about the universal attributes of God. The fifth one is, is that God is sovereign. That word sovereign, watch, in the English dictionary means one possessing or holding a superpower or sovereignty, or one that exercises supreme authority within, a with an unlimited sphere. That means that God possesses a superpower within inside of our lives. That's why me and you don't have to worry about what's happening with the government. That's why me and you don't have to worry about what's happening with our finances. That's why me and you don't have to worry about how we're going to make ends meet. Matter of fact, God is going to bless you in a special way. Why? Because God is sovereign and God is in control. God controls everything and God is able to allow certain things to come in. And God is allow, able to allow certain situations to come in our way. Because what? Because God wants to grow us. God wants to teach us certain things. But as God does, God, because he's sovereign... He's able to put things that are limited that they could only attack us a certain way or they could only hold us down for so long. But after a while, God begins to bring in his blessing. Why? Because God's sovereign. The Bible says in Revelations chapter 21, verse 6, that God is above all things and before all things because he is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. He is immortal and he is persistent. Everywhere, so everywhere, so that everyone can know him. He's able to be what? To be the alpha and the omega. He's the beginning and the end. We can take courage in that church. We can take courage and understand that God is in control. That God is able to do something. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 6. That God created all things and holds all things together both in heaven and on earth, both visible and invisible. Ain't that powerful? Ain't that powerful that God created all things and he holds all things together, both on heaven or on earth, both visible or invisible. God's able to hold things together. God's able to do something with inside of our lives. God's able to move in situations that we can't move in. Why? Because God created all things for him. God created even the evil that prowls around the world 
world, and God will use that to give himself glory. God will use that to benefit his kingdom. God will use that to grow his church. God will use that to do something powerful and bring about a revival that's taking place. You know, the Bible says in Jeremiah 32, verse 17, it says that God can do all things and accomplish all things. Nothing is too difficult for him. He orchestrates and determines everything that is going to happen in your life, my life, in America, and through the world. Whenever God wants to do something special, he does it, and nothing's impossible for him. God can accomplish all things with inside of our lives. Not only, not only are the attributes of God in that fashion, when we look at how God is sovereign and how God is omniscient and how God is omnipresent, but we're also able to see that God has attributes that are moral. And one of them is, is that God is love. That God is love. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4. But God, being very or so very rich in mercy because of all his great and wonderful love, which he loves us. Look how powerful it sounds in the Amplified Version. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 says, But God, being so very rich in mercy because of his great and wonderful love, which he loves us. That means that God loves us. That means that me and you can take a hold of that. That means that me and you can understand that God loves us unconditionally. It doesn't matter what we do. Come on, you heard me. It doesn't matter what we do. God's love is unconditional. No, nothing can stop the love of God upon your life. Nothing can stop. The Bible says no, 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 nothing on earth or on heaven or angels or demons can stop the love that God has for us. God has something special for us, and we can look to, but one of the main things that we can look for is his love. We can look and understand that God's, uh, God's love is unconditional, that God loves us so very much that he gave his only begotten son. That means you can stand and say, man, I know I messed up, and I know I did something wrong, God, and I know I made a mistake, God, but God still loves you even though you made the mistake. God still loves you, and God will use that mistake and use it as a testimony of how he brought you out. God will use it as a testimony, as a trophy of how God was able to deliver you from that. How God's able to take you from that. Why? Because it's his love. His love. Not only is God's love rich in mercy, but also, too, another moral attribute of God is that God is good. Come on, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. The Bible says in Psalms 25, verse 8, that good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in his way. Isn't that powerful? How God will instruct even sinners in his way. God will instruct sinners in the way that they should go. Why? Because God's, God's, God is good that God's able to even instruct the sinner to repent. Come on. Ooh, that's heavy. Huh? How we were all messed up and we were all jacked up. And, man, we were all busted and disgusted. Come on, somebody. Don't look at me like that. Huh? Don't look at your neighbor like that, right? We were messed up. We were messed up. We were messed up. But by the grace of God and by his goodness, we're able to be saved and we're able to be delivered and we're able to live victorious. Why? Because God's good. Because God is good, and God's going to do amazing things with inside of our lives. Me and you have to understand this. This is where I'm going for, is that God is unmovable and unchangeable. God is unmovable and unchangeable. People will change. Come on, don't look at me like that. Seasons will change. Situations will change. Circumstances will change. But God is unmovable and unchangeable. God is not like anything else. God cannot be compared to anything. God cannot be uh, 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 compared to any situation or any circumstance. Why? Because God is unmovable. God is unchangeable. The Bible says in Numbers 
chapter 23, verse 19, that God is not a man that he should lie, or the son of a man that he should change his mind, or that he should repent. God, If God said it, then he'll do it. If he's spoken it, will he not make good of it? You know, a lot of times what the enemy will try to do is he'll try to come in. He'll try to come in and discourage us, and he'll try to come in and, and bring doubt and defeat. You know, especially in this time of expansion, God, the enemy will come in and he'll try to say certain things to us and say that God is not going to fulfill and God's not going to bless and God's not going to give you that house and God's not going to give you that job. But I'm here to let you know that God does not lie. God does not change his mind. If God gave you a promise, come on, somebody, if God gave you a promise and God gave you a scripture, God gave you something that he promised you, then God will fulfill the will of, 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 his, of him that he has for your life. God will bless you in due time. Why? Because God will make it good. God will fulfill it. The Bible says this in James chapter 1, verse 17. It says, every, every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. God does not change. Listen to me, church. God does not change his mind. God called you. And if God called you, then he's going to fulfill the calling on your life. If God's called you to minister to children or to people or to, or, 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 or God's birthing a ministry with inside of you or God's birthing something with inside of you, then God will fulfill it with inside your life. Why? Because God does not change. You know, and as we look to this and we continue to understand God and his faithfulness is going to produce a rich faith towards him. That's right. As me and you continue to look to God and continue to understand that he's unmovable and that he's unchangeable and that God doesn't change his mind and God is, is firm and God is able to do something with inside of our lives, then we're able to produce a rich faith towards him. We're able to see uh, 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 that God's able to produce a, a good faith with inside of our lives. God's able to do it. Why? Because God has something special. It produces a special faith with inside of our life. And real quick, I want to give you three things that God's going to do as we get into a a time of expansion as we begin to step into this next level that God has for us, as we begin to step in into the next calling that God has for us, as we begin to step into what God for, has for us, number one, we need to have the faith to obey the Lord. There are going to be some things that are going to be coming up that God's going to challenge you in and that God's going to begin to begin to want you to birth into existence or God wants to begin to build a ministry with inside of you. And me and you have to learn how to be obedient to the Lord. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 28, Now it shall come to pass that if you diligently obey the voice of your Lord God to observe carefully all his commands which I give you today, the Lord God will set you high above all the nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord God, your God. You know, me and you, all, all we have to do is le learn how to listen to the voice of God. And sometimes that voice can come through our leaders. God will begin to speak things to our leaders. And God will begin to speak things through pastor. And pastor can begin to challenge you. And pastor can begin to empower you and, and, and pastor can begin to to do something and say you know what there's something about you there's something that i want to give you and god begins to speak through our through our leadership why because god wants to use us and god wants us to obey him to see those things come to fruition to see those things come to pass as we begin to be obedient to him we might step out into something that we don't see we might step into situations or or certain challenges that arise that we don't see, but those things could be things that God is orchestrating, that God is maneuvering. And as we are obedient, you'll say, God, I don't know what I'm doing, or God, I don't see the full picture, but I'm going to trust you. Then God is going to begin to use you in a powerful way. Not only does God want us, does God want us to enrich our faith to obey him, 
But number two, God wants us to have faith in our leaders. God wants us to have faith in our leaders. And what I mean by God wants us to have faith in our leaders is that God wants us to see the success of our leadership. God wants us to see our, the success of our leadership. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 7, it says, Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you, and consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. You know, when we look at the success that Pastor Ezra and Sister Ruthie had over Victor Irish International over the years, and we're able to see their success there in Eagle Rock, and we're also able to see the success that they're having right now within our church. We're able to see the success that's taking place. We, are, we have to have faith in our leaders. And what I mean by that is that we have to look to their success and to what God has for them. And as God begins to bless them, then God's going to bless us. As we stay in accord with our pastor and as we stay obedient to what he, where, where God's calling them to go, and as we begin to see that God has his hand upon his life, and as we begin to follow that, we're going to be also able to experience success with inside of our lives. We are also able to experience success with inside of our lives. Why? Because God wants to raise up people. God wants to raise up leadership, and God wants to raise men and women of God that will take their place and say, Pastor, here I am. I've been, I've, been, I've been under your leadership, and I've been hearing the word, and I feel the call tugging in my heart, and here I am. And as God begins to raise them up, God will also raise you up. God will also raise us up together collectively as we begin to have faith in our leadership and where pastor's taking us and where pastor's uh, going. We, me and you have to learn how to follow by faith into what God has for us. And what do we do? We look to the success of what God's taking our leaders. We look into the success where God's taking our pastor. We look into the success where God's taking pastor and how God's used them in a special way. And as we see the success in the track record, me and you are able to follow them. Me and you are able to follow where, where, where God is taking our church and where God wants to see the leadership rise. And as God does that, then God's going to be able to bless you in a special way. God wants to raise up people for his church. God wants to raise testimonies of of God's goodness with inside of their life. God wants to raise people. And as he does that, then God will continue to bring hope to the inner cities. God will continue to bring hope. And lastly, not only does God want us to obey him at his word and, and have faith in our leaders, but God also wants us to have faith in our calling. You know, in reality, me and you have a calling. Me and you have a calling, and me and you have... A, a, a calling that God has for us. You know, the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, and I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. You know that word prophet means preacher. You know that God's called you to preach. Come on, somebody. Don't look at me like that. God's also called you to preach. God's called you to preach with your life there at work. God's called you to preach the word literally there at work. God's called you to open up a life group. God's called you to minister to people. Come on, in a gas station or right there at Costco. Come on, come on, somebody, as you're waiting for your pizza. Come on, somebody, right? God's called us, and God has a calling for our lives. And as we continue to follow that calling, as we get into Veti, and as we get into God's word, and as we get close to our pastor's, uh, our pastor's heart and our, our pastor's uh, wife, as we begin to get close to them, we're going to be able to see that calling on full on, inside of our lives. God's called us to be preachers of his word. God's called us to be preachers. God's called us to be able to give life to people. You know, as we talk about uh, an expansion what we're really talking about is souls. What we're really talking about is that God's going to bring the souls. God's going to bring the increase. God's going to begin to stretch his hand on the SGV uh, uh, region. And God's going to begin to bring in souls from different parts of the, of the city and of the 
region and even of the country to what? To Victory Outreach West Covina. As people begin to hear what God is doing, God is going to bring in that. We need to be ready for that time of expansion. And me and you have to really focus in on who God is, the God of expansion. Let's say a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you, God. And we just pray right now for every living room, God. We pray for the stirring of your Holy Spirit to be upon them, Father God. Lord, that you would take control, God, Father. Lord, I pray, God, that you would, Father God, come upon people right now, God. Begin to speak to them, God, and be, begin to do something special, God, with inside of their lives. God, I thank you for them, for everything that you're doing, God. I ask you, Father, that you would continue to move in a special way. And we're able to give you praise, glory, and honor. For you are a powerful God in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Come on, give the Lord a good hand right there where you're at. Come on, give it a like. And listen, church, God has something special for us. We're coming into a season of expansion, and God is going to do something powerful. You watch. Amen. Stay tuned, and God bless you. We'll see you soon. Thank you.